have a bad news and I have a good news. Let me start with the bad news. The bad news is wickedness is real. Say it after me. I know it's a bad news. Just say it. 1 John chapter 5 verse 9. 1 John. Chapter 5. Verse 19. I'm sorry, not 9. First John 5, 19. Are you there? Some people are opening the Old Testament. You must be joking. Hallelujah. First John 5, verse 19. If you are there, let's read together. One to read. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world, the whole world lieth in kindness, brotherly affection, it says, the whole world lieth where? In wickedness. This is the truth that many people have refused to accept. This world we live in is surrounded by wickedness. And tonight, briefly, we'll examine the mystery of wickedness. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. To let us know that there is an operation of wickedness that is present in the earth. And because we live here today and now. And we plan to live here for a very long time. It's important to understand the realities that are here. And how to exempt ourselves. Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Against, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Finally, against spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Some versions say in heavenly places, the heavenlies. I told you that there are many planes of heavens. Is that true? Remember our teaching, the reality of what? Heaven and hell. Get the teaching. I told us that there are many dimensions in the realm of the spirit. Many, when you say the heavenlies, you're not necessarily talking about the heaven of heavens, where God dwells, or the third heaven. There are many planes in the spirit, and the Bible generally calls it heavens. Are you getting my point? And I told us that this is where some people have gone to and come back and say they went to heaven. They went to astral realms. They went to different kinds of realms. Hallelujah. The Bible says that there are entities that are called spiritual wickedness. It's even a name. Spiritual wickedness. And they dwell in the heavenlies. They operate from that plane. Hallelujah. So the whole world lie it in wickedness how come we are not taught that this world we live in from the moment you are born you are born into a system that is fabricated and doggedly into wickedness and until you exit this realm you are going to live with the reality of this predicament so knowing how to exempt yourself and your loved ones and exempt all that are around you is the reason why we are taking this topic. Are you getting my point? You are not going to stop the world from being wicked. Are you getting my point? Because the Bible calls Satan the God of this world. The God of this system. The one who fashioned a system that does not honor the values of the kingdom. Someday, every knee will bow experientially. Is that true? And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. But as at now, we do not yet see all things. Remember our teaching last week? We do not yet see all things. That's the reason why there are a brother who was saying, arm robbers came and wanted to injure him. Think about it. Why will somebody sit down in the night? While you woke up in the morning, he was thinking, I'm going to wound somebody this night. How can a man think this is his goal for the day? I must wound somebody this night. 
It's called the mystery of wickedness. How many of you say, oh, why are they treating us bad? Who did I offend in my village that they want to stop me from marrying? Welcome to the reality of this world. You, you don't, Dr. Paul and Encher says, this, this, the earth realm is not a playing ground. He said it's a battlefield. Whether you believe it or not, as you grow, the realities that will confront you will make you to reconsider whether it is a joke or it is true that wickedness is real. Many preachers, listen to me, many preachers in a bid to magnify God and demagnify Satan have, while that is a good intention, they have lied to people. Are you getting me? Lied to people that uh, there is the concept of wickedness it does not exist. Please get this once and for all. Wickedness is real. Are you getting me? Somebody just gets up and looks at you and says, Benga, I don't like you. Why? I, I choose to hate you. And my life's goal is to prove to you that I hate you. You buy a nice car and take it home. Somebody just begins to frown. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Car. How old is this boy? 25, 25. I was 40 when I bought a bicycle. And because of that, listen, listen, listen. Many of us grew up in the cities. We grew up around. We watched all kinds of, of, of deceitful films that have covered us from the reality of the fact that wickedness is real. A number of us here are not working. But for those who are working, you know that when you get a job, for one single space of promotion, there may be a number of people. And everybody is eyeing every other person. Is that true? The day your director calls you, they call you and say, so what did he say? The next day you come back and your director says, don't be stupid. Me, I spoke to you. Something happened somewhere that you are not aware of. But you are paying a bitter price. Those who understand that wickedness is real and have equipped themselves with the revelation and the spiritual arsenals will keep soaring as if Satan does not exist. And they will leave others crying and languishing. There are many of our loved ones who don't go home. Some of you have not even gone home since you were born because they told you one scary story. They say nobody goes there and comes back the same. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare. Occultism is real. Witchcraft is real. Yokes are real. Bondages are real. Even Jesus said he was sent to deliver those who have been locked up in prison. They didn't see the prison physically, but they are in prison. Moving, but in prison. Hallelujah. This is what is affecting a lot of families. A lot of families. And I prophesy to you that in the name that is above all names, as we are teaching, just as the teaching is going on, many of you will suddenly find out that liberty, you are just liberated from this nonsense that the devil wants to tie you with. The strength of evil is ignorance the strength of evil is ignorance that's the highest weapon satan uses against the people of god ignorance the bible says in psalm 82 he said they know not neither do they understand they know not and then a few of us have gone a step further to know the name of jesus Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And it's not producing any result at all. So we're going to be examining these things. Praise the Lord. So wickedness is real. What is the goal of wickedness? Why wickedness? What is the goal of the evil that we see in our society? What does Satan want to achieve with armed robbers and terrorists and wicked people? 
in the villages and around witches and wizards, necromancers, people who try to project wickedness to people's lives. What is the goal? We must know where Satan is going. Why is he doing this? Hallelujah. What is the whole idea behind the, set, the, the devil trying to turn the heart of your father against you or your mother against you or your loved ones or your employer or your boss or your pastor, whatever? Why does Satan enjoy wickedness? What does it do to him? Hallelujah. Wickedness or evil generally is brought to attempt to achieve three things. Number one, to discredit God. To discredit God in your life. To discredit God. If there is anything Satan is obsessed about, is bringing you to a point where the credibility of God drops to zero in your life. How many of you have heard people say, I used to trust God, but right now, I trust anything that works. God or others. Have you heard people speak like that? They say, I remember, I trusted God. From 17 years till 40 years. God didn't bring a husband. Right now, I trust any other thing. Whether a stick, a candle, fire, once it produces result, I trust it. That's exactly the goal of wickedness. When armed robbers attack you and you are shouting Jesus, Jesus and they still injure you and they wound you. When certain things happen, they attempt to discredit God. Discredit the word. Never forget this. The mystery of wickedness was put in place by Satan. First in an attempt to prove that God is not as great as we claim he is. So, when a man has been victimized so much, that, that, that pain becomes a stronghold in his mind. How many of you have seen people that when you are praying, their eyes are even open, they are just looking at you, saying, in Jesus' name, amen. While you are praying, they feel like slapping you. Once you just round up the prayer, they just move. You know they didn't believe this at all. The mystery of wickedness at work in their life. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? When you tell your parents, oh, I'm attending Koinonia, God is doing great things, and then the devil orchestrates something terrible to happen. Are you getting me? Your father has an accident or something like that, and he returns back and you say, Daddy, I just wanted you to know that I dropped your name in the prayer request. He will give you a dirty slap and say, you and all the liars, and every man of God is a liar. The mystery of wickedness. Number one, to discredit God. Do you not see that that was exactly what Lucifer tried to do in the Garden of Eden? He came and met Eve. Read his conversation with Eve. He said, did God really say if you eat of this fruit, you will die? Now, you know that he used half truth, right? He was not, he just patched it up. He said, but do you know that there is a story you do not know? And that's why, that's what you will know when you eat of this fruit. And truly, when they ate of the tree, the eye, their eyes were open and they began to have a sense of the knowledge of good and evil. So number one, to discredit God. Number two, number two, to weaken and possibly destroy your faith in God. To weaken and destroy your faith in God. The Bible says, be not weak in faith. Speaking about Abraham now. Be not weak in faith. The Bible says, he considered not. So, wickedness is orchestrated by Satan. Listen please. Wickedness is orchestrated by Satan. To weaken your faith. When you really see wickedness, you will need to trust God to stand. That's what philosophers are using. Why can a loving God 
allow children to be dying in Sudan? Is that not what people say? How can a loving God allow this and that to happen? And it weakens your faith. This is why Jesus says, if the Son of Man returns, will he find faith in the earth? Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? Especially for many of us who have been taught that when things go wrong in your life, it's a sign that something is wrong with you. It's a sign that something is wrong. Satan capitalizes on the inconsistency of that message. And when anything happens, you just believe that this trust you've been having in God. This is why Job said, though he slay me, Satan, you won't achieve what you are trying to achieve. Though he slay Are you seeing now? Job's wife came to a point where she was tired. She said, Job, Mio, I don't think God is faithful again. Curse God and die. When your wife tells you to curse God and die, that's a level of discouragement because she's supposed to be the last person that will stand by you. Are you getting my point now? So to discredit God, to discredit God, number two, to weaken or totally destroy your faith. Number three, what's the goal of the mystery of wickedness? To perpetuate, listen please, very important, to, I'm thinking of the best way to put it, to, to become a channel through which the program and the evil agenda of Satan for nations will continue. Let me explain what I mean. How many of you have heard that word covenant? Why will the devil want our forefathers huh, to go and bow to him and enter a covenant on behalf of people yet unborn? What, what, is, what is his passion about people that are not born yet? Are you getting what I'm, I'm trying to explain now? Because Satan is trying to secure a channel through which he can pass a transgenerational channel. Do you understand what I'm teaching you now? Are you getting my point? So although it will take 30 or 50 or 100 years for this generation to be born, Satan will say, you, since you are representing them, and I'm going to explain this to you. I will explain to you, I hope, if I can remember, the mystery of reproduction. And you understand that reproduction is not just about sex and giving birth. The Bible says by one man, not one woman, sin was transferred. Are you getting me? By one man, through the blood. Praise the Lord. So, he now enters a covenant and says, alright, in this family, we will worship you, give us children. We will worship you, give us protection. Deal. Is that true? Now he can go and give birth to 30 children, no CS with his wife. No CS, no hospital. But there will not be any complication because a pact had been entered. Are you getting my point? Fast forward two or three generations, somebody comes up and says, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm not going to involve myself with all of these things. Because, you see, I'm going to talk about the mystery of blood. Blood does not have time. It speaks. It will raise an alert in the realm of the spirit. Something is being compromised here. And the next thing that will happen is that these people, because they are trying to breach a contract. Are you getting me? So it will activate the mystery of wickedness. The devil will now come to say, who is trying to stop this? And if you have authority enough, you will be the one who will break that cycle and enact a new one. Are you getting me? And if you do not sustain enough knowledge, you will die. And then the devil will say, this is a, an example of what I can do with anybody who plays with me. And the other person will say, I'm willing. Are you getting my point now? I don't know how you are going to write the third point, but that's what, I, that's what the third point is. Praise the Lord. To become a channel through which transgenerational wickedness will be perpetuated. God bless you, sir. The mystery of wickedness. Look up. 
How many of you know that if there are no human beings in the earth, wickedness will be unfruitful. It won't yield any result. Is that true? When you understand this, you will know that wickedness will not cease. In fact, the Bible says it this way. The Bible says, um, how did he put it now? It says, ah, end time, Matthew 24, how did he put it? How that people will be offended, is that true? Paraphrasing, like wickedness will increase, the imaginations that are in the hearts of men will increase. Look at me. Those who are praying, listen, and I want you to get this. Those who want to solve their family problems by just saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, wickedness will not happen to me. When I finish with you, you will know that there are certain things that if you do not do, that prayer is incomplete. Because there is already a seed, like a gene. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you believe what I'm teaching? I know this is wrestling a lot of our theology. Oh, I'm in Christ. Calm down. We're, 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 we're heading somewhere. Because many of us have been cheated. Oh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. I will show you that your personal salvation does not change your territory. Are you getting my point? That I am born again does not automatically make my mother, brother, sister, and father born again. If that were the case, everybody would just kneel down on behalf of their clan and just accept Jesus once and for all and let's rest from this nonsense. Hallelujah. Is that true? So wickedness is real and the goal is to discredit God, to weaken your faith. Every single arsenal that Satan launches at the believer is aimed at discrediting the faithfulness of God. Because he has a name and he is called faithful and true. That means he does not lie. That means he cannot lie. That means he is ever, he's, 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 um, ever faithful through all generations. But when things begin to happen in your life, that negate what the word of God is saying. That's Satan attempting to discredit God in your life. Say amen. The mystery of wickedness. Wickedness is real, brothers and sisters. This operation is working in our government. This operation is working in our families. Look at me. Look at me. How many of you have heard the stories of parents... Who will put something in hot iron and carry it and press it on their children? Is that called discipline? That is the mystery of wickedness. Hallelujah. Or a mother look at her own daughter and say, I curse you. You won't marry, you won't move forward. This is a, it's a spirit. It's not just an attitude. Are you getting what I'm saying, please? And if we do not understand this and deal with this, it will limit us in a very mighty way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for opening our eyes. So the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world, your village, your house, the job you are trying to look for, that office is in the midst of wickedness. You may be born again, but are your fellow employees born again? Hallelujah. And you are going to have to live with them. You do business with wicked people. You go to buy rice and buy gari from somebody who went to a herbalist. You bought it, you ate. Is that true? So you're not going to say, me, I'll only work with Christians. Uh -uh. It's impossible. You live in a world where everyone is permitted to believe what he wants to believe. And because of our interrelations, you must find yourself relating with people. So you must know how to keep Satan where he belongs. Praise the Lord. Are you following me so far? Hallelujah. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the realms and jurisdiction, the boundaries of demonic operation. I won't stay too long 
in this aspect because I guess that this is the part that has brought fear and confusion and this is one of the most unscriptural areas of spiritual warfare in terms of its explanation. This is where you have people um, write accounts in an attempt to show us the structure and the organogram. Are you following me now? I know that there are many books, hundreds and probably thousands and even millions on books of books on spiritual warfare, deliverance, and so on and so forth. And there are many opinions. Are you getting me? The Bible tells us something very interesting. It said, do not be ignorant of the devices. I told you the word devices is the word stratomai. His strategies. So, we are just concerned about his strategies. We are not necessarily concerned about the kingdom and what the organogram of the satanic kingdom is. Are you getting my point? I personally believe that an extensive study into the organogram and the structure of Satan is not really necessary. Especially in light of the fact that we know that in Christ he has been defeated. Are you following what I'm saying? So, I'm just guiding us just to bring awareness. There are many books and I've read some of them. You have read some of them. Hallelujah. They begin to tell you all kinds of things. They list physical territories in the earth where there are headquarters of demonic activities and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not, I do not have enough authority to dispute the things that are being written. Are you getting my point? Especially for those that do not compromise the written word of God. Some of these things were written by people who allegedly said they were part of the demonic kingdom and for some of them they were deep into occultism there are lots of books occult grandmaster now in christ there are books by rebecca brown mary baxter um dr olukoya who is considered to be an authority in the subject of deliverance and spiritual warfare there are a lot of others you know different brothers prophets people and so on and so forth who have written books others went to heaven others went to hell others died and came back others just studied the bible so we have this extensive um description level 111 level 999 level 666 level you know this and that and that and for many people we have rather than concentrating on the strategies the methods of Satan and understanding our victory, we have paid attention trying to study and research on the organization of the demonic kingdom. Let me tell you something. If you do that, the danger is that everything will suddenly become demonic around you. Have you seen people like that? Why are you looking at me like this? They just say, Kai. This lady, you are, because of something they read, they say, okay, in our kingdom, when we want to seduce a man, we look at him like this. So a lady is quietly, she's even feeling sleepy and just looking at you. Just say, Kai, in Jesus' name, don't, blood of Jesus, you are putting sign of the cross. So we don't want to see this kind of immaturity in the body of Christ. That's why there must be a balance. Are you following me? There are people who don't wear black on Friday or on Sunday because they read a book and they say, every time you wear black on Friday, notice, check left, you will see a star. That's a sign that we are coming out. You know, and all kinds of sects come up with... Now, I hope you understand that I'm not condemning anybody. You get my point? I'm only trying to explain to you that it is quite counterproductive to spend all of our time and energy trying to understand the entire organization listen how many ceos maintain the same structures they change so that you were delivered from occult in 1980 does not mean the organogram that used to exist still exists it is logical for any leader to be dynamic are you getting my point so when you come and say okay there is a demon his name is Luke. He's the one in charge of Zaria. He's the one appointed to stop Koinonia. His name is Luke. What if Luke... What? What, what if Luke was promoted or demoted and they now brought another person and you are still advocating and you say, Luke, I'm speaking to you now. You are hearing my voice. 
look in somewhere say me i'm not even in nigeria again and now you're shouting you see there is a lot of spiritual ignorance a lot of it and most of this has come because we have uh not necessarily gone out of scripture but taken other materials and use them as the ultimate templates to help us understand the realm of the spirit i think sufficient enough is the information the bible gave us about satan i believe it is sufficient enough praise god you get my point if you're in the occult before and you were delivered and you wrote a book please don't feel sad if you wrote prayer point that your book should increase it will increase we prayed for you hallelujah but at the same time don't go about sitting down teaching people and saying okay in the realm of the spirit red means danger white means this yellow means this so don't wear yellow shirts if you really mean business with prosperity keep yellow shirts aside this is part of the teaching that has moved from church to church and place to place. So we have brought religiosity and a lot of forms of religion in an attempt to keep Satan. There is nowhere in scripture, listen, or you say, ah, don't take products from Procter and Gamble. They are Freemason and all of that. What do they make? How many of you have used their inhaler? You force it in your nose and you and did you go to hell? The demons come to disturb you. You see, I'm saying this thing because we are touching on this topic and I'm trying to clear the air. There are many of you who say, I know somebody is a bad person. He sells meat. Me, I know this guy goes to the Habalis. We won't eat his meat. Question. The one you have been eating before, who told you that that meat was not taken to a Habalis? Are you getting my point? Rather than allowing fear put religious rules, why don't you rise up in Revelation and realize that the Bible says a thousand shall come by your side. Only God knows how many poisons I've eaten in my life. Because the Bible says when they serve you, just give thanks and eat. Hallelujah. Many of us don't eat certain people's food. Just said, this lady is always frowning. At. I won't eat her food though. I don't know what I've entered right now. And then many of us, listen, I have had other teachings. Aha, let me even talk about it. I've had other teachings that say somebody can come to you. Come. He can just come and hug you and he has initiated you. Listen, let me balance something very quick. Was that how you got born again? You think, listen, I want you to understand that the will of man is a powerful force. Even Jesus stood at the door of the heart and was knocking until man agreed to open. Are you getting my point? If you are not in Christ or you are ignorant of the principles of the kingdom, it is possible. Are you getting my point? But to now come and say, oh, because I'm just sitting down and you came to put with one on my head. Suddenly, I've been initiated. Except you don't carry fire. The witch doctor together with his fire, it will burn into ashes there. There was a time people were complaining that a particular woman in Joss, she was doing some kinds of funny things and then getting power to make people come and eat her food. You know how many people ate that food? <laughs> when they told me the restaurant, I laughed. I said, oh Lord, I don't know whether I'm eating here or not, but it cannot have power over me. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift, lift up, up my, my soul? soul. Oh, my oh my God, God. I, I trust in thee. thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. I pity the person that will go to a coven and call my name. That's the last time you have the opportunity to shout it. Believe me. See, 
I'm rushing myself because let me see if we can get to weapons of victory. Except you don't know the spiritual arsenals you carry. Let me tell you, Satan can bow. This is the sweetest part of this gist. That's why I want to rush all these things so that we'll get there. Say after me, Satan can bow. I hate the way Satan has been so magnified. There are many people who teach, they say, do you know that these classes of demons are so powerful? Not even you can stand them. There are people who believe that. I don't believe that. Absolutely. I don't believe it. The Bible says, God gave him a name that is above every other name. He said at the mention of that name, every knee, not some, every knee must bow. Hallelujah. Let's rush. So, jurisdiction, number one. Number one. The realm of the spirit. Territories of operation. Or realms of operation. Number one. The Bible says that they operate in heavenly places. So, that is a realm of demonic operation. Please write quickly. Can you put strings? I'll put it on door. Hallelujah. Wickedness. Now, these are the territories that exert it upon government. Remember that the Bible says, there's no time to show you this. The Bible says when Daniel was praying, remember the story? The Bible says that principality that was operating over the territory of Persia, the prince of Persia, withstood the prayers of Daniel. Is that true? When Gabriel was going to bring him the answer, he said, when, he, when Gabriel arrived, he said, from the very first day that you set yourself to pray, your prayers were heard, okay? And while he was coming, the prince of that territory. So there are powers that station themselves across territories. That's why you can see that certain geographical territories exhibit similarities of certain character. Is that true? You find out that certain people, certain territories, the men are irresponsible. Certain territories, you know, they, they, are, they are given to anger. Certain territories, they are given to irresponsibility and all kinds of things. You find out that it's a common trait because of this operations of darkness in the heavenlies second is the air please take notes this is very important notice that it is the features that the holy spirit uses to manifest himself that satan also operates there the air the bible talks of the prince of the power of the air these spiritual forces of wickedness are the ones who manipulate and control people because the media is through the power of the air. Are you getting my point now? They are, they are the ones who initiate mind control systems. And this is probably one of the most disastrous manifestations of darkness. Deception and ignorance. Are you learning something now? So the air, the prince of the power of the air second scriptural proof that the air is one jurisdiction of operation remember when jesus was going to meet the madman in gadara what happened the bible says suddenly the winds and the waves became boisterous but jesus looked and he knew that this was not just about wind this was not just about the storm look at the tsunami that happens is it not wind wind these are spirits it's just that we cannot see it with our optical eyes. They are spirits. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? So the air. Number three, water. Water. This is very important. This is where we talk about the marine world or marine spirits. This is the jurisdiction of darkness that is responsible for prosperity, for lust, for seduction. And all kinds of perversion. Every kind of immoral perversion is associated with this dimension of demonic operation. Water. Very important. Are you learning something tonight? Water. And this one is very important. That's why you find out that 
territories that are covered around the riverine areas exhibit attitudes of lust. Are you getting me? Lost on faithfulness in marriage and all kinds of you see it rampant. Are you getting my point? This is spiritual intelligence. I will give you sufficient to the point that you need that I believe you can research more. But I think that explaining to you what I'm explaining to you is giving you intelligence so that when you are talking with people, it's like a doctor diagnosing a patient with this spiritual intelligence. You will understand, you will know how to act. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There was a time, I remember at the Bar Beach, it was, it was a popular issue that uh, I think a particular bank or organization built a glass house. Is that true? They built a glass house and the witches and wizards around the marine, they wrote a letter to them. They said, you better do something about those buildings before we scatter it. You are interrupting us. Water. Very important. Very important. Job began to talk of the deep sea creatures. He called it Leviathan. The deep sea creatures that arise from the water. You read the book of Revelations and it tells you, you see the interaction of water and all of these things. So I've told you the realm of the spirit, the air, the atmosphere. The water. This water one is very serious. Do you know something? I will show you from scripture something that may surprise you. Do you know everything you see in existence, the animals and the rest, do you know they came out of water? They came out of water. Genesis. Let me show you very quickly. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army the rising up. They'll break every chain, 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 break every chain. help me search for it Genesis 2 verse what 21 yeah beautiful thank you good Bible students Verse 20 and 21, Genesis 1. Are you there? I just want to show you that the water is a very mysterious object. And God said, let the waters do what? Bring forth abundantly. So there is a mystery of abundance and water. Are you understanding me? Is it in your Bible? He said, let the waters bring forth abundantly. The moving creature that have life. Where did they come out from? He said, and the fowl that may fly. Even the fowl came out of the water. It's in your Bible. Above the earth, in the open firmaments of the heaven, verse 21. And God created great sea monsters. And every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly. Are you seeing now? Is it in your Bible? The water. Very, very important. This is why Satan associates himself a lot and there are many demonic, diabolic things that happen with water. Hallelujah. The next medium of manifestation is fire. Notice that these are the same expressions of the spirit fire almost everyone here or most of our villages have festivals there is no festival without fire 
How many of you have seen diabolic people put fire and keep putting it around them? What are they trying to achieve? It is a realm of operation of demonic substances. See, let me tell you something. Fire is a big mystery. Big mystery. You can't hold it. It doesn't fear anything, but it consumes everything that come ar comes around it. Hallelujah. Fire. Very important. Even the world will be judged with fire. The first judgment was with water. The second judgment will be with fire. Hallelujah. Number what now? Four? Number what? Five. I'm going to give it to you now. The fifth one is the earth. Dust. Earth. Adam. Hmm. Look at me. How many of you have seen people in your village get angry and they carried sand? And spoke to it and dropped it back? Or like the Igbo people do. When they take small drink, they pour small on the ground and say to our ancestors, What is it about the earth? The prophet looked and said, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. That means the earth is not non-living like we teach in biology. It was in the days of Moses. The Bible says the people rebelled against God and the earth opened its mouth. It has mouth. It swallowed them. Till tomorrow we cannot find them. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? These are jurisdictions of operation. That's why priests and the rest put their shrines on the ground and then they sit down. Even if you give them one million, they won't go and build a luxurious house. That earth, they must associate themselves with the earth. Hallelujah. These levels, this medium, these realms of operation, every manifestation every single medium of manifestation let me give you one more are you ready human beings human vessels as far as satan is concerned this is the best medium of manifestation why because every other thing i've listed does not have a will they don't have willpower as it were are you getting me and they don't have souls only human beings have souls. Please, are you learning something? So Satan entered the madman. Remember? The madman in Gadara. Do you know that the entire spirits across those territories, they were resident in that man. He stayed in caves. He was alone. He caught himself. But the moment Jesus was coming, without any publicity, he came out and went to wait close to the water and was waiting for Jesus to arrive. Immediately Jesus arrived, he began to talk to him. He said, we know who you are. Have you come to destroy us before our time? What time? What time did Satan teach them? Let me tell you something about the powers of darkness that you must understand. When they say their time has not come, what that means is this. Listen. You cannot seize their operation from the earth. But you can seize their operation from your territory. Are you getting this? Please understand this. That's why we can't all sit down right now. And say Satan. Leave the whole world. Go to Venus. Or Mars relocate there after all is empty go and build a new kingdom leave us in peace so says the apostles and the prophets no you can't do that what you can do even jesus while he was on earth he didn't cast satan out of everywhere wherever he met with him he told him mr man go listen jesus himself answered one request of demons they said please cast us to the pigs what did he say in other words he knew that as far as exiting this realm is concerned, they are not going to leave. What we can do, are you getting my point? So that there are certain prayers we will stop praying at once. Are you getting my point? Many people pray and what they mean by their prayer 
is to tell the devil, bye-bye, pack your load and go. Let me not see you and don't even go. Have you had that prayer? I cast you into Gehenna. Have you had that kind of prayer? Don't come out again. Uh, is that really an accurate prayer? No, no, don't feel bad. Believe me, with the kind of prayerful people on earth, if that prayer were answerable by now, there would have been some clear air that shows that sufficient demons have gone down to Gehenna. Gehenna is called the place of the dead. Are you getting my point? Listen, he said resist the devil. There are people that pray all kinds of prayers. Oh, we cast you and we lock you up across a forest. Just stay there. Those kinds of prayers are not accurate prayers. Please, please listen. Don't be offended if you are used to praying those kinds of prayer. But I want you to know that we cannot cast Satan and demons out of the earth. We can only secure our territory. Are you getting my point? Because the Bible says Satan is like a roaring lion. He's like that. He moves to and fro. Praise the Lord. Say I'm learning something. Water, wind, the atmosphere. I just want you to know that these are operations of darkness. Every time a native doctor or a herbalist wants to do certain things, one or more of these elements must be in place. Yet, these are the same elements that the Holy Spirit associates himself with. What does that tell you? Discrediting God. You see that? Thank you, Jesus. Let's touch on weapons of victory. I'll just use one and then we'll stop. Where? What's the time? Oh, there's time. Praise God. Don't look at the time. Look at me. The clock is not preaching to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, before we talk of the weapons of victory, let me just speak very quickly on the strategies of Satan. The strategies. The strategies. This is, I think this is the one that is very important. Strategies. There are three main strategies from scripture. They will not change. This is the one you can bank on. They will not change. Do not be ignorant of the devil's stratomai, his strategy, his way of doing things. It can come in different forms, but it is one of these three. Number one, I shared it last week, ignorance. 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 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. Ignorance. Are you there? Okay, I thought it was projected. Let me turn there. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world. Okay. 2 Corinthians 4. Not Chronicles. Sorry. 2 Corinthians. No problem. Let's continue. In whom the God of this world or this age. The word age there is aeon. In whom the God of this system. The thinking pattern of this system. Has blinded the minds of them who believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine upon them is that in your bible it says satan did what blinded their minds everybody say ignorance the number one and hear me as sophisticated as satan looks his greatest strategy is to maintain ignorance in the lives of believers or across territory. Say ignorance. Notice, every manifestation of wickedness in the earth realm has been strengthened by the ignorance of the people. Because the moment they know, they will revolt until victory comes. Every 
bad government in the world has been able to execute its agenda by enforcing ignorance. Are you getting that? That's the spirit of the power of darkness. Say ignorance. Ignorance. Now, come. Any other guy again? Come. I need two gentlemen. Stand here, stand here. I want to explain something. Stand here, stand here. Now, please, everybody look at me. I want you to understand this and I pray you get this revelation in Jesus' name. There are two sides to the understanding of the kingdom. Please don't forget. There are what? Two sides. The first is understanding the person of Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus Christ. The second is the principles of Jesus Christ. And that's what we call the principles of the kingdom. Is that true? Are you following me please? So the person of Jesus Christ. When you come under the lordship of Jesus Christ. When you surrender to Jesus Christ. You have embraced his person. But that does not automatically mean. That you have knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. Are you getting my point? The person of Jesus Christ secures your eternal destiny and secures your peace. The principles of Jesus Christ secure your victory in this earth realm. So there are many well-meaning believers who know the person of Jesus Christ in terms of their loyalty to him, but they lack sufficient understanding of kingdom principles. Are you getting my point? For instance, there are many well-meaning Christians who are poor and broke and they may remain like that forever. And they believe that just by being close to Jesus Christ, automatically prosperity comes. No, there, there is a kingdom principle that governs it. Is that true? There are many people, although they are close to God, many people hate them because the kingdom principle for access is honor. Are you getting my point now? So, whether you are a Christian or not, when you dishonor people, you will never have access. Are you getting my point? So, there is ignorance. What Satan tries to do is to take this first level of ignorance to stop you from seeing the light of the gospel to come to Jesus Christ in the first place. But if he does not succeed and by any means you surrender your heart to Jesus Christ, this becomes the second phase of the ignorance he stops you are you getting my point now so there are many well-meaning christians who the devil have lost it on them as far as the person of jesus is concerned but he has shielded them from understanding the principles of the kingdom that's why when somebody gets born again the next mission is to subject him under a radical teaching ministry where the principles of the kingdom will be taught and then he will understand this is what spiritual growth is about growing in intimacy this is why we call koinonia intimacy and partnership intimacy is our knowledge as we progress deeper to know god partnership is our working with the word and with the spirit are you getting my point now do you understand this this explanation i've given you because the greatest tool that satan uses his number one strategy is what? Ignorance. So, an unbeliever comes. How many of you have seen a lot of unbelievers who understand Bible verses? They understand a lot of Bible verses. You say something, they ask you, they say, okay, let's turn to the book of Matthew. I have this and that. And the next thing, they will not accept the simplicity of the gospel. Are you getting me? To surrender to Jesus Christ. Then, when... They eventually surrender. The devil makes them feel that there is nothing more in the kingdom. So they remain in church and they think remaining in church is equal to spiritual growth. So eventually they tell you, I've been here 20 years. And based on that, there is nothing you will tell me. Ignorance of the principles. Are you getting my point? This is the deliverance that is happening to some of you right now. Because you are born again. But you don't know why things are not moving the way the word says should be. Could it be that you do not yet have the comprehension? 
Paul himself prayed in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to the Ephesian church who were already born again. He said, for this cause, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant unto you the spirit of what? Wisdom and understanding or revelation. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, flooded with light, that ye may know. So the Bible tells us, that according as his divine power has given us what all things but those all things are encapsulated in knowledge when you have access to the principles the door opens up to you at once that's why all things are not possible for everybody what is possible for me although we are all equal in christ but our comprehension of kingdom principles have created the divide so i can speak to a demon spirit and say go and he will go not because my born again is greater than your own but my i have a greater comprehension two students in the same class taught by the same teacher one gets 100 one gets 50. are you seeing that now it is the degree of their comprehension it is because of that that some will be 30 fold some will be 60 fold and some will bear what they all produced but according, the Bible says those who were on good soil were the ones who had and understood. But the difference was their degree of understanding. Are you following me now? Say the person of Jesus. Say the principles of Jesus. Say the person of Jesus. Say the principles of the kingdom. The question I want to ask you is, how many principles of the kingdom do you know? This is the measure. See, listen. Listen, this is very important. Healing, for instance, healing comes from the body of Jesus. By his stripes, we are healed. Are you seeing that? Favor does not just happen automatically. So, when you understand the laws of the spirit, then you will know how to navigate through life. So whenever you, f you see a roadblock, you go back and search out diligently what kingdom principle is responsible for the result you are looking for. Because if God did it, then it is possible. It is only the light that will open the door. So arise and shine. Not because you want to arise. Your light, access. When that revelation comes and you understand it, the door is opened at once. If you understand what I'm teaching right now, it's automatic. You don't need to pray about it. That's why, see, the Bible says while Jesus was teaching, the power of God was moving around, waiting for those who will understand and believe, so that at once it will be activated. While Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell on them because they understood and they believed immediately. Are you getting the point now? So when the word of God returns to him, it's because he did not find a believer. Praise the Lord. Are you getting me? Bless you. Bless you. Weapons of victory. Let me just take one. The name of Jesus. Hmm. I will share a revelation about the name. There are many weapons of victory. Maybe let me just run through a few of them. The name of Jesus. The mystery of the blood of Jesus. Listen. The power of praise. The power of a seed. I'm going to teach you the weapon, spiritual arsenals that will lock the hands of Satan at once. The power of prayer. Hallelujah. The power of unity. The power of love. All of these are dangerous spiritual weapons. That will keep Satan where he belongs. Is this teaching benefiting you? Are you getting something? So I'll just take on one of them. The power of the name of Jesus. We'll sing that song. There is power. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We'll sing that song one more time. To the shame of the devil. And then we'll just pray. Just pray in tongues for a minute or two. And then you sit down. I'm about to give you a revelation that will set you on fire. Shabakata labaka press secretary. 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. To break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing it one more time. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Can you stretch in tongues for just one minute? Zakata pakata preketa, mamrosote kata balada baka, shapata la baka, mamrosote balada baka, shapata. Ipa pa pa preketa. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power. There is power. There is power. Ipa pa pa in the name of Jesus. There is power. Ipa pa pa preketa. 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 There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Take your Bibles. Let me have your attention. Lord, let our eyes be open. Show us something powerful. Let me tell you something. There are many of you, if you catch this revelation tonight, you will be amazed. This name will work for you. Years ago, I called this name, oh, nothing happened. I shouted Jesus. I said it like a special number. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open our eyes, oh God. I show you a mystery right now. Mark 16. Break every chain. There are some chains that need to be broken. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Verse 15. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Take my value system to every creature. He said, He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believe, believe not shall be damned. 17, if you are a believer, please read it. One to read is projected. Stop. Stop. This sign shall follow them that believe. They will do certain things when they have a revelation of my name. He said, in my name, they will do what? It tells you all the things that can be possible in the name. In my name, they shall, number one, number two, number three, they shall take up what? Hold on. What is the meaning of that? What is they shall take up serpent? What is the meaning of they shall take up serpents? I will soon explain it to you. Because Jesus told Moses, I mean God told Moses, remember, he said, take the serpent from the tail. I will show you what that means. They shall take up serpents. It doesn't just mean carry a physical snake. Remember at the burning bush, when Moses met with God, I, you remember, are you getting my point? He threw the rod. Is that not true? And he told him to take it. To hold it by the tail. Is it not in your Bible? I will show you what that means. To take.
take up serpents. It's a revelation. It's a revelation. I will show you a scripture that says the horn in a man's body is on his hands. A horn is a symbol of power. Are you getting my point? So he said, with that horn, you will take up serpents. It's a mystery. I will explain. He said, in my name, that will happen. He said, and if they drink any deadly thing, that means if they move in my name, no poison will harm them. So long as it is in my name. He said, they shall lay hands. I will show you the mystery of the laying on of hands. It's not just about touching people. The horn in a man's body is his hands. The apostle said that you will stretch forth your mighty hands. The right hand of God, the Bible says, is the hand of power. Not his right leg. He said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Listen, I want to explain to you the mystery of a name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, if I call you, come. Benga. The first revelation of the name of a man is it invites his presence. When you invoke the name of a man, his presence is encapsulated in his name. Are you seeing this? I called his name and what happened? His presence showed up. So the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming their words with signs. It happened because a personality was answering to his name. So they went in the name. This is what it means to come in the name of the Lord. To come with the backing, the presence of God. Weapons of victory that can kick any satanic arsenal out of your life. Hallelujah. Watch this. I called his name. And he confirmed that that name is true. The name of a man is his identity. Every time, see, listen, listen. That's why when God met certain people, he changed their names. Because the name of a man represents the prophecy of his life. It represents his ability. It represents the prophecy upon his life. When he met Jacob, he said, no, you are not a cheat and a supplanter. As a prince with God, you have fought and prevailed. I changed your name to Israel. And the prophecy started following him. The mother of Jabez bore him in sorrow. And all through his life, the name was following him. Name follows people. A name is a spirit. It's a presence. And Jabez said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Change my name. Hallelujah. Are you getting the revelation now? So the first revelation is that the name of Jesus compels his presence to show up in that scene. Listen. Now you understand what Paul was saying. Say not in your heart who will ascend to heaven and bring God or who will go to the deep. He said, but the word is near you, even in your mouth. That means when it is uttered with revelation, the presence shows up. No time, no distance. Are you getting my point? This is a very, very powerful revelation. Very powerful revelation. You must believe this. Let me demonstrate something. Take this, hold it. This is ordinary handkerchief. Who brought this handkerchief? Are you seeing this? This is an ordinary handkerchief. He's holding it, right? Give it back to me. Watch the power of the name. This is not just for jamboree. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Hold this. Hold it. What is the difference? He just held this. Is it not so? He held this. He held this. You see the power of God there breaking out again. See, this is a revelation. This is why saying in Jesus' name is not what will bring the miracle. There is a revelation. This is what I want you to know. It will rattle from the realm of the spirit and it will affect you in this realm. This is a handkerchief he held. That's why I did it in your presence. It's the name. Say not in your heart who will go and bring him from heaven. He is closer to you. This is what koinonia is about. The reality of a personality that can be demonstrated here and now. 
Paul said we do not teach cunningly devised fables. These are not just stories that cannot be proven. Unbelief. So you can be, listen, you can say Jesus, Jesus, nothing will happen. The next thing I want you to know is what is really this name? Let's examine it. What is the name? We have said what the name can do. But what is the name? Look up please. I want to shock you. Listen. The name is not Jesus. You see where people have been missing it? This is a hospital. There's surgery going on right now. The name is not Jesus. He said in my name. He didn't write the name there. He just said if you can find what that name is. What is the name? The name is not J-E-S-U-S. Listen. The Bible says, Isaiah speaking. He said, you shall bear a son. They shall call him what? Emmanuel. Did they ever call Jesus Emmanuel? But the prophet said that will be his name. The name was a revelation that God is with us. Is that true? He said they shall call him Emmanuel. Nobody ever called Jesus Emmanuel. Jesus was a name that was given to him in the earth realm. There are Mexicans that bear Jesus today. In fact, in Hebrew tongue and Aramaic, it's not Jesus. It's Jesus. That's what they call it. So it's not in the pronunciation. It's not in J-E-S-U-S. Before we pray, tonight, once and for all, I want to reveal to you what this name is. In my name, Kaya Sata Kabarata Makapakata Teketa Tadeka Seka Pata Beka Mambrosko Pekatalia Baba 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 Seke Proska Pariata Sokotopa Sopadiata Empleketeka Bashoteka Rento Sopakata Sekete Legate in the name I come 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 Get this revelation tonight. Get this revelation tonight. Get it. And rise to a new level. Get it. And rise to a new realm. A new dimension. You don't have to say it. The real is here. The authentic is here. Listen. Listen. Look at me. Look at me. Listen. I want to explain something to you. Listen. Many of you think that it is an act of arrogance. When I tell you all men are not equal. We are equal in Christ. But something has separated people. The Bible says there are some bodies terrestrial. Some celestial. Not everybody you see is the same. It's not pride. This is why we are bringing us higher. I tell you the truth. You will shake hell. This is how you will live as if Satan does not exist. You are coming in the name. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. Zeka kapata katabalada bakate basila. God doesn't care whether it's Koinonia or anywhere. Anywhere his name is mentioned, he shows up. He doesn't want to know whether you are playing or you are taking it serious. It's a law. When you invoke it, he shows up. Because every man answers his name. Only a dead man does not answer his name. Oh, I believe the Bible. There is an angel standing close to this lady. Breakthroughs are already happening. Deliverances are happening. Believe it. 
deliverance is happening. I give the chains falling. Shakata baladaba strongholds. I give the chains falling. I command every chain fall. I give the chains falling. I command every chain fall. I give the chain. I command every chain fall. I command every chain fall. I command every captivity go to and from now. Every sickness go. Every infirmity go. 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 Every yoke. Every disease. I hear the chain. I hear the chain. Shakata bakata la ba 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 ba. Chains Hallelujah. Look at me. Let me show you something that will surprise you. Hallelujah. Sam, come. Watch this. Father, let the sounds rise in your name. Watch what will happen as he sings. Just raise any song and sing. Let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy life and let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy life let hope rise was the same person that ministered the same person that seemed many of you do not understand the power in the name Jesus didn't lie to us believe me that name is powerful that name is powerful every demon and every spirit just the symbol in this place right now every foul devil at the count of three i come in the name go 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 every spirit every demon every devil i command you in the name go out out you will not return again go go He said in his name, we will cast out demons. I cast out demons now in that name. Go, go, go. I take a baba baba baba. Cabra. So proto so pregete. Every problem.
problem you have come here with tonight it leaves you here now every problem you came here with I don't care what it is in the name in the name it will bow now every problem every problem every challenge Jesus. Please sit down if you can. We have to finish this. Please sit down. Sit down. Kadabala Katabrondo Sotola Kosha. Sit down if you can. If they can't sit down, just leave them, please. We have to hurry up. I'm teaching you this because God is depending on you. The goal is not to watch a man of God do this. The goal is to show you that this is a possibility here and now. Take that name. Go and dislodge powers in your house. Let the people of God know that your coming for koinonia is not just a religion. Without a demonstration of the kingdom, they will doubt you. Go and change the things they say cannot be changed. See, you don't need to care how it will happen. Just go in the name. Just go in the name. Philippians chapter 2. Let me reveal to you what that name is. That's why I told us to pray in tongues. Something special, supernatural, about the name Jesus. Something happens when I mention your name. Listen. God gave us power to solve problems. If you are not interested in solving problems, you will never get the power of the Holy Spirit. Solve problems. Philippians chapter 2. Let's hurry up. There are many weapons of victory, but I'll talk on one. Philippians chapter 2. Let's take it from verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Verse 9. Wherefore, Kabbalataya, God had so highly exalted him. Stop. I taught us last week that until Jesus died and rose again, he was not yet exalted. Is that true? Listen, I want to surprise you. The name was not yet given to man officially until he was coronated. Are you getting me? Because as it were, when Jesus was on the earth, his name was limited. Why was it limited? Because he was a man and he had not defeated death. So the last enemy to be destroyed, death, still had power over him. Are you getting my point? This is the reason, listen please, this is the reason why when he sent the 70, he begged them not to go to certain places because the power would not work there. But when he resurrected, remember Mary wanted to touch him 
And he said, no, don't touch me. You will corrupt a coronation that is about to take place. This is what the psalmist saw. And he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my, that was the coronation service of Jesus. The moment that happened, he returned to earth. And he said, all hail. Now, all power has been given. Go therefore. No boundaries, no limitations. You just go. Anywhere it will work because a coronation had happened. Are you getting the point now? So, it begins to give us by revelation. Paul said, wherefore, God exalted him and gave him. That means before then it had not been given. He gave him a name. What is this name that we have been looking for? He said, which is above every other name. Verse 10. Whatever that name is, whenever that name of Jesus, he said, at the name of Jesus, the name is not Jesus. Every knee should bow at the name that was given to this person called Jesus. You get my point? Every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and of things under the earth ready for the name let me show you 11 and every tongue should confess that that jesus christ has now received a name that is called lord that's the name that's the name that was given to him look at it that's the name lord psalm 24 quickly psalm 24 Psalm 24 verse 1 Psalm 24 verse 1 Are you there? Everybody read one to go Stop Did he say the earth belongs to God? Do you know what Lord is? Lord means master Lord means owner Ma Lord means authorized legislator authorized so the earth belongs to whoever will bear this name called Lord the name was reserved no one had taken the name yet when Jesus defeated death God said you now qualify take the name so you now become the literal possessor of the earth are you getting me now the earth is the Lord's. So the Bible says, if you want the name, here is the condition. The name is upon a mountain. But who shall ascend to that hill? And who shall stand in his holy place? This is the requirement. He that has clean hands and a pure heart. No man qualified to ascend that hill. But Jesus was as a man tempted like us, yet without sin. So he ascended the mountain. That's why the Bible says, before he led captivity captive he first ascended he descended after that he ascended he took the name and he came back and he entered the room without the door and he said all hail all authority has been given to me listen this is what jesus said listen he said whoever believes in me i will give the privilege to share my name you get the point that name lord so just like me he will become an authorized legislator so in my name he will cast out devils so that it will not make any difference whether it was jesus speaking physically or you or a handkerchief whatever comes in the name brings the presence of jesus directly that's why whether you speak English or Hausa or Greek, demons don't hear those things. They didn't speak English in Bible days. All you need to do is come in the name. So handkerchiefs and aprons were taken. Handkerchiefs and aprons. They contacted the name, Lord. It says, and the fullness thereof, the world, and all they that dwell therein. Listen. Listen, listen, listen please. The Lordship of Jesus is the revelation that when you come under 
you have carried the name is not Jesus it is a revelation that this man God has made him both Lord and Christ he's not just the anointed but he has become the owner are you listening to me so if I look at this sister for instance I come in the name because she belongs to God I have the authority to cast out whatever is molesting her because I come in the name. Are you getting the revelation? Hold on. Many people think it is J-E-S-U-S. -S. Do you know why we shout Jesus? We want unbelievers to know that the owner of that name is Jesus. Are you getting my point? When you tell demons, go, is go J-E-S-U-S, is go L-O-R-D, they search in the spirit to see whether you have the revelation of that name. Once you have it, they will obey you. So after this night, you will go back home in the name. Many of you, you will go and look for what you left and say, where is it? And it will say, I left. Because the person who left was not the person who came back. You came in the name. Remember, there was a certain time even the disciples could not cast out devils from the epileptic patient because they did not have the name they thought it was just jesus doing a lot of things now when they had the name peter was angry in acts 3 says now it's my time to shine he saw the man who was lame and the bible says it says silver and gold i don't have but i have something you can know you have something he said this is what i have in the name you see that that was his treasure he said this one no man can take it from me i may not have silver and gold but i have something that can solve your problem in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up the man was still looking at him and peter said you don't know the power of the name i'm invoking he held him and the bible says he leaping stood son of man he said can these dry bones live he said i don't know he said all right now you prophesy he said i prophesied as i was commanded that's the secret when god gives you his name he has authorized you to legislate on his behalf as many as received him he gave them power the power is not falling and rolling on the floor the power is the ability to share in his lordship Hallelujah. This is what makes ordinary men to become something else. So that you see an ordinary man moving. But you don't try him when he calls on a government that is bigger than you. You see that? We are going to pray. I've been hearing that there are many people that molest people on their way home. We are going to pray. Let me tell you the truth. I pity the next person that would try to molest anybody here the name is the name listen please I want you to believe this believe this years ago they stole my laptop thieves came to our house we we're all sleeping they just carried the laptop and my brothers were running to chase them and honestly when I got up I just had commotion and I was laughing my own was not that I lost that I was just laughing I said oh God I love you if my laptop doesn't return give me money to buy another one and an angel appeared before me and he just did this and that was the end of it seven hours later the laptop was back on my table hallelujah some people from nowhere mobilized themselves and made up their mind to look for the thief they went and caught him in pizza i was busy counseling the name see the name of jesus is powerful don't let secular humanism or the things that you that did not work for you before make you think it does not work are you getting me you say ah but i use the name i told you they stole my wallet my, the wallet didn't come back but that does not ever mean that the name is not powerful this is the problem with a lot of people we are too our our faith is too small the moment something does not happen we just conclude this thing doesn't work you think so hallelujah praise the lord let me stop here we'll continue next week rise up i feel the spirit of prayer 
Hold your hands together. Come Hold your hands and pray in the spirit. Just for five minutes. Please. All the instruments coming. Pray Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we'll take three prayer points. Number one, listen. Let me tell you why this name does not work for many people. There is a little secret in the Bible that many of us ignore. The secret to resisting the devil. The Bible says, submit to the mighty hand of God. Submit. Your degree of submission is your degree to which his authority will flow. Many of us have not yet submitted to the lordship you have given your heart to the lord that's true but you have not come under his influence tonight you are going to pray and say lord i willingly submit to your authority to your government pray and watch the wonder watch the wonder of what will begin to happen in your life Inside and outside, make sure you are praying. Rabasta Papa Dia, Rabako, Secretary Debo, Rabosa, Papa Papa, and the Brigadia. Lord, I submit to the Papa Sakatana to your governing Rabosa, the Rabosa, the Rabosa, the Rabosa, the Brigadia. Lord, I submit to your mighty hand. I submit. I submit. I submit to your authority. Ibalabosa batala bregedi gedegedi ya. Rabosa tanda bakata le bregedi ya. Ibosa tanda bakosa gedele bregedi ya. Labosa batala bregedi gedegedi ya. Indoso tanda bakasa. Hallelujah. Listen. The centurion surprised Jesus Christ. He gave Jesus a revelation that touched him. Jesus said, let's go to your house. He said, no, you don't need to go. For I am a man under authority. I'm under the authority of the Roman government. And by reason of being under that authority, I tell one, go, and he will go. I'll tell the other, come. And Jesus said, what? I've not seen this kind of faith, this kind of revelation in Israel. Submit yourself to the mighty hand of God. Then resist the devil. Hallelujah. 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 In the next five minutes, I like you. I don't know how you are going to pray. Leave your hands. Praise God. I know we are men of prayer. Listen, you have been confronting darkness, but you try it now in the name. You, you see the revelation? David met Goliath. He said, you come to me with your spears, but I come to you in a name. In a name. You come to me with bow and arrow. I may, I may be small, but there is a name. An office. I invoke the power of an office. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is there anything... 
too hard for me to do I am that I am that's what the Lord is asking you tonight is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am what is it that he cannot do is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am the God of wonders that can change situations that is too hard for me to do I am that I am hallelujah now listen the issues that have been affecting your life and your family in the next five minutes tell it I confront you in the name that sickness in the name come on prayer warriors come on prayer warriors we confront the Lord is in this place. The Lord is in His temple. The Lord is in His temple. The situation in my family is changing. Is changing. Is changing. I command breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I command breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I command healing. I command miracles. Hey, Command your marriage. Command your prayer life. Come alive. Hey, confront your unemployment issue. Confront your business. Confront your family. I come in the name. I come in the name. I come in the name. Set a dead loss. The Lord rebuke you. 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 Let tones fall. Let miracles occur. Let testimonies occur. Lord, I release breakthrough. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. Please listen. We are going to pray. And this night, you are going to say, I take my eyes away from every challenge. Whatever the devil has used to discredit God in my life. Are you hearing me? There are many of us that cannot trust God because of the things that have happened or the things that are happening the bible says abraham wavered not at his faith through unbelief he considered not the deadness of sarah's womb although she was close to a hundred years he counted him faithful faithful god cannot lie satan can be tired your faith can weary the devil listen Right now, I want you to lift up your voice and begin to prophesy and say, I take my eyes away. 
I don't care what is not working or what is working. God, you are faithful and your word must come to pass. You are not a man. Come on, lift your faith. Lift your voice and pray. Provoke faith. I'm a believer. I believe the word. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word will not fail. The word will not fail. Pray. Let faith rise in my spirit. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. His promises are yea and amen. Pray. That sickness will leave. That oppression will leave. That failure will fall. The marriage will come. The job will come. The building will be completed. Your spiritual life will grow. Your prayer life will grow. The habit will die. The marriage will work. Pray. Yes, Lord. We are men of faith. We are a faith filled generation. Koinonia is a place of faith. We they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. Thou cannot be shaken, but abide there forevermore. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and leave not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I see a lot of testimonies coming. Mighty testimonies. Believe me, mighty testimonies. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last prayer point. I'm led for us to do this. Hallelujah. You're going to hold hands with somebody. If you can pair yourselves into three, that will be excellent. You are going to pray for the finances of the people in that circle. Provoke the heavens to be open. The Lord in this month, if, if there are not enough people, just hold two or three, anybody. Come on, pray now. We command it. We command it. In the name of Jesus. Let there be testimonies, breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, testimonies. Pray, it will happen. Pray, it will work. Pray. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Shekata bakata prekete baradaba. Shoprokoto prekete. Visit families, oh God. Visit your people in mighty ways. Visit your people in miraculous ways. Prophesy, Gentiles, come to your light, kings, to the brightness of thy rising. Your gates are continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. You will call on one person, and a nation will answer you. Hallelujah. 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 
Listen. Listen. Brothers and sisters, you do not do good to your loved ones if you carry all this revelation and not work with it. It has nothing to do with MOG. It's about being an ambassador, an envoy of his presence. Now you know that you are not ordinary. It's not just the issue of confessing it. It is the truth. It is your present reality. No matter how weak you think you are. Our job here is to make you become strong. The Bible says ordinary men came to the cave of Adulam. And David made mighty men out of them. Hallelujah. You are not ordinary. There is an anointing upon you. There is an unction. Walk conscious of it. It should not create pride and arrogance. You are like a dove. But where you see the devil, you switch. And you become a roaring lion. Listen. I'm giving you an assignment this week. Take on a project. Resist the devil everywhere you see him. Are you getting my point? If you look at yourself alone. And all the revelations you have alone, you are small. Are you getting my point? But realize there is an authority. Every time you stand before situations, just know that I am small. But there is one who is mightier than I. This, is, this was a testimony of John the Baptist. There is one who is mightier than I. Invoke his presence to the scene and go to bed. When you go home, all those spirits that come to molest and press you, you tell them now, I sleep in the name. Come and press me. Yes. Absolutely. I told you my story. I was being oppressed by devils. Although a preacher, because I did not understand the revelation, the Bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Hallelujah. I don't drive devils from me. When I caught the revelation, I went home and I shouted. I said, the spirits that oppress me, I invite you this night. They were officially invited until tomorrow they have not come. Never. Look, realize this. Just as Father Abraham and the rich man, there was a gulf that divided them. Revelation is what will exalt you. Are you getting my point? Anything in your life that is not working, as little as anything, hallelujah, you find something growing in your hand that should not grow. Don't just laugh. See, the problem is many of us are not convicted enough. So you get ashamed once you go outside of this circle. You don't want to look like you are a spirit coco. That's the problem. So we can jump. There are many of us here that you behave as if you are convinced. But the sincere truth is if you walk out of here, you are ashamed of everything you were shouting and praying about. And when it takes, it, it comes to taking steps of faith. Even when your phone rings and it's a scripture, you answer it or off it quickly. Lest you be embarrassed. Do you think that God did not know what to do with his time? And he just brought men in the air to deceive them. But I know whom I have believed. I'm persuaded. Any day, any time. On jeans, on trousers, on suit. I am persuaded. I would die believing this revelation. Hallelujah. Please be convinced. Listen, many of us in all sincerity, we don't spend time with the word of God. There are many of us after today now, it's until next Friday again, before you open your Bible and start smiling. You see, ba, brothers and sisters, this thing, you can't fake it. If you are not doing it genuinely, it will show. Are you getting my point? No, this is not one of the things you fake. You can't fake conviction. No. You can't fake conviction. You can play games with power. 
you can do a lot of things but you cannot fake conviction hallelujah lift your hands i want to speak over your life please believe it's part of the things that we do all the time i wrote a post and i gave the media to put it on facebook i am not on facebook but once in a while as the holy spirit puts it in my heart i write these prayers and they are not just to get activities no hallelujah it's our job to speak over your life listen there is power in the blessing hallelujah many of you do not know to bless means to empower you to prosper to rise from where you are he said blessed be abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and earth and his destiny opened up please lift your hands i want to speak over your life hallelujah in the name of the lord jesus christ i bless you with the favor of god i declare over your life that you are well favored you are like a well watered garden whatever looks like mockery in your life i curse it now in the name of jesus christ i speak over the works of your hands i instruct them to prosper i instruct them to prosper whatever project you are having i speak to it grow in the name of jesus christ everything that is alive grows therefore i command it to grow i speak and i pray over your life all the destiny helpers that are required to take you and to lift your hand and to introduce you to those who will take you to the next level i call them into your life now in the name of jesus christ i declare that the name works for you the same anointing you see in this house carry it and do wonders with it change destinies affect lives heal sick bodies the same way the devil runs here he will run in every area of your life I speak over your life whoever you bless is blessed whoever you anoint is anointed whatever your hand touches it prospers I bless you above every curse I bless you above every limitation I prophesy let Reuben live whatever is dead in your life whether in your organs in your system whatever should be there and is not there we create it now 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 whatever should not be in your body and is in your body at this moment as i speak i command it to live now and never return again i bless your finances we are a prosperous people and i declare that prosperity follows you you are blessed in your health your mind is blessed in the name of jesus wisdom is at work in your life you are men and women of character you are men and women of power you hear the voice of the holy spirit you are men of faith you are women of faith return with amazing testimonies whoever has mocked at your god i pray this night that may the god i serve may he step in like a warrior in your life and surprise they that have mocked god in your life whoever has laughed at your christianity i pray except it is not the god of heaven that wrote that inspired the writing of this word i pray right now be lifted above your equals may they see your lifting you do not merit it but let the grace of god take you 
May the grace of God take you. Take my heart. That's my desire, Lord. And more oh, oh, oh. Take my mind. Would you take my mind? Take my will, take my will, conform me to yours, to yours. Let my life be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell Lord I'm singing this to you let my life be the temple of your spirit let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. This is my prayer, Lord. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit. Once again, fill this temple, Lord. Fill this vessel, Lord. Fill this temple, Lord. Fill this vessel, Lord. For I am nothing without you, Lord. You are the power at work in me. Yeah. You're my life, you're my breath, you're my all. You're my all. your presence that grants us the ability to minister to your people. Lord, I thank you for the blessings of your presence. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit, my friend, my teacher, my advocate, my strengthener. Stand by one who turns every wilderness into a fruitful vine and every fruitful vine into a forest Lord I thank you it's all about you All this is for you, truly. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. I see if you should do things my way. You alone are God and I surrender. Lord, we are standing before your presence. We have come to meet he that is able to change. My Father, there are sick bodies in this place. There are oppressed people. Joshua Selman cannot help them. Lord, let the people know I'm not the healer. 
Let the people know I'm not a deliverer. Let the people know there is nothing I have that did not come from you. That I'm a product of your mercy and your grace. And that you desire to bring everyone into this realm of intimacy. Asi parende kaboshi La preda bakurata mrasnava Zele bakres kom rasnava lati Predo zagrende kaboshi The glory of your presence Let it fill this place Let the glory of your presence fill this place Let the glory of your presence fill this place Mantle your people with your presence, O God. Mantle your people. Let there be a holy convocation. My Father, my Father, Abba Father, my Father, I dare to call you my Father, my Maker, my Father. I hide behind the cross. Let the people see Jesus. Blessed be Hosanna Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Mighty Holy, I adore you, Lord. Let the people feel the peace of my passion for you. Zena Maria, na 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 mo shata bala na 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 na. Zena Maria, na ba shata na ba si ya na 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 na. There is more of my presence here, the Spirit of God. I desire to draw men into my presence. Come, approach my glory, say the Spirit of God. I lead you into my glory, say the Spirit of God. I lead you into my glory, say the Spirit of God. Into the beauty of holiness. Where I crown you with splendor and joy. That is where I replace your heaviness. Just worship him in one minute. Let's let the whole 
The glory of God tests your seriousness because every time the glory of God shows up, your flesh begins to react. That part that will not bend to His glory. In his presence, he will be refined. I tell you the truth. The secret of grace. When you touch him, the world will know that you touched him. There's no guessing it. There's no pretending it. Hallelujah. God who sits in the heavens glory to your name verse 11 and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body James. Who is James? James. James. Who is that? Can I see your hands? Come quick. You are awesome in this place. There are healings going on. God is healing people right about now. You feel the heat of the spirit going through your body. It's the healing anointing. You are awesome.
that you bring me even for the sake of my family that you will experience his glory you will begin a series of supernatural encounters with the holy ghost that's what he tells me lord breathe upon him your power your grace let him experience all of you see the fire of god is upon your hands even for your music at me sir where's your father what's he doing your mother yes. you have been praying about it in the family God says I should tell you that your father is going to receive a job and that for everything that they have done against him that God is going to replenish sevenfold are you listening to me take this word and take it any problem with your you have anything with your courses pray because I see that in this exam you are writing there is a problem and that problem may delay you in this school I listening to me pray that God will help you and don't be rude to any lecturer are you listening to me does this make sense what I'm telling you don't be rude to any lecturer you'll be frustrated for nothing the Lord bless you Acts chapter 19 And God wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Listen to me. It's God's desire that we become living tabernacles of his presence. Are you listening to me? That we become vessels of glory. The Bible says there is this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of power might be of God and not of us. It's God's desire that we come to a point where our bodies can host his glory. Where we can host his power. Where we can host his anointing. Are you listening to me? The Bible says that Paul was so full of God. He said handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. Handkerchiefs and aprons taken from the body of Paul. And the Bible makes us to realize that these handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul and it was used. And devils cried out. Sick people got healed. There is a realm of glory and anointing and power hear me that god wants us to step into beyond nominal christianity listen to me we live in a wicked world are you listening to me the lord has been showing me visions of the kind of demonic and satanic things that hell is releasing against god's people oppression sickness and now we we have let me tell you something and i want to warn you listen i believe in the word of god but can i tell you something christianity without power will frustrate you are you listening to me that you become full of god's glory full of God. The Bible says in that day, it says the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and what? The yoke from off your neck and it says it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. In our bid to put balance between the word and anointing, people have given all kinds of excuses for not pressing into God and we have trivialized the anointing of the Holy Spirit to a point that many people just say look forget about it there's all these people manifestation all the time let's sit down and receive the word what is your definition of the word because in the days of the apostles they did not have what you call the bible 
So what was the award of God? Are you listening to me? A powerless Christianity will end you in frustration. I get, I get messages and I meet people almost daily. And I tell you the kind of oppression that Satan is bringing, the hostility that is coming from the pit of hell does not require just the kind of Christianity where you say, John 3, 16, all things are mine. Uh -uh. Are you listening to me? Handkerchiefs, the Bible says. An apron. Paul was so full of the Holy Ghost. The power, the anointing, the potency of the Spirit was in him. The Bible says to a point that people were waiting for him to step out. Peter was so full of the divine life of God that when he stepped out, his shadow, his shadow. Hallelujah. Jesus said something in Isaiah. In fact, Luke 18. Let's read the account in Luke chapter 4, sorry. From verse 17. The Bible says that he went into the temple as his custom was. And there was given to him the book that was written by prophet Isaiah. And then he opened it and there he declared, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, that Spirit, has anointed me. Smeared me, anointed me. And because of the anointing that I carry, he said, I will set the captives free. Declare liberty to the poor. It's amazing how we try to do God's work without his anointing. The anointing of God's spirit is his empowerment. It's the energizing that the spirit of God brings in us. Hallelujah. No king was ever allowed to function in ancient time until he was anointed. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, listen to me. One of the things that he does is not just to enlighten you and cause the word of God to come alive in your spirit. The Holy Ghost empowers you. Hallelujah. He causes his anointing to be alive and to be at work in your spirit. The Holy Spirit causes you to come into the place of his ability and his power. Causes you to begin to walk in the glory of God. The Bible says, and Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost. It took the Holy Ghost for Stephen to have just been stoned and he did not, he was not angry. It takes, listen, listen to me. It takes the spirit for you to do some things you want to do. Are you listening to me? It takes the Holy Ghost to love. For the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. It takes the Holy Ghost to heal the sick, to set the captives free. If our Christianity is true, then we must be like Jesus. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, Peter speaking, he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Jesus we are trying to become like. The Bible says he went about doing good on account of that anointing and the ability of the Spirit and healing all they that were oppressed for God was with him. Hallelujah. Are you not tired of sympathizing with the many oppressed people around you? Are you listening to me? How many oppressed people do you see around you every day and every time? Listen to me. Every time I see oppression, I take responsibility for it. Because I know that God is not limited. There is a level of glory and grace that we must step into. And when we step into that level of glory and grace, you will be able to host a greater weight of his presence. Are you listening to me? A greater weight of his anointing. A greater weight of his power. And out of the overflow of that reality, you will step in and begin to do the works of Jesus. He said, if you say you are the children of Abraham, then do the works of Abraham. That means if you say you are the children of God, do the works of God. Handkerchiefs and aprons. In John chapter 7, Jesus speaking from verse 34. 
it was on the last day of the feast and jesus said if any man thirst he said let him come unto me if any man thirst let him come he said and that he will drink and that out of his belly shall flow what rivers rivers the revelation of that river is given in ezekiel chapter 47 when the bible begins to talk about the river that came from the east side of the temple and the bible says that he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my knees and then he measured a thousand cubits and then it was to um you know my my ankles he measured a thousand cubits it was to the loins he measured a thousand cubits he said and it was a river that i could not pass through he said wherever that river went the fish that was dead would come alive it's a life-giving river. In fact, the Bible says, there is a stream. It said there is a river whose stream makes glad the city of God. There is a river, the river of healing, the river of blessing, the river of power, the river of deliverance. And God desires that we step into that realm where we can be useful for the king many of us listen to me we must step up many of us have been good counselors enough it's time for us to be miracle workers are you listening to me we have done enough of counseling enough of saying wow one day in the sweet by and by now it's time to be miracle workers doing the works of jesus christ there are many of you that if you will increase capacity you will end the captivity in your family you know what i'm talking about the thief cometh not john 10 10 but to steal to kill and to destroy satan has left his mark upon many lives and many families i was sharing i think it was during the minister's meeting i was saying that how that the lord showed me i saw an unusual release of the spirit of cancer cancer sent to different families breast cancer lung cancer cancer of the four ladies cancer of, i saw these things and it amazed me and let me tell you something if your christianity is just enough to say wow lord i thank you there will come a time when it will be as if the bible lied about the victory of jesus how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. In fact, the Bible says that when I came to you, Paul speaking, he said, I did not come with the excellency of speech. The world has had enough of our noise. He said, but in the demonstration of power, that your faith will not be grounded on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. There are so many situations that happen to believers and we are so helpless about it. And as helpless as we are, God is also sad because that's not the limit. There is more that he can do through us. But we must build greater capacity for his glory. When we sing the song, what manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He sings back and says, what manner of man are you? That you will not yield to me to see the fullness of me. What manner? Paul walked in a realm. See, listen. These guys walked in a realm that they called them gods. He said the gods are come down to us. They said Paul was Zeus. And then his colleague Hermes. These were ancient gods. Men who lived like spirits upon the surface of the earth. This has nothing to do with ministry. It is the blueprint for safety for the times we are coming. You must be full of God. The anointing will be broken only to the degree. I, I, I think we, we were watching a program this evening. And uh, we're watching something. It was a deliverance that was happening to someone. And then I was watching. And when the person got delivered, the demon entered. Another demon entered back into the person again. Hallelujah. When you are full of the presence of God, I assure you, no demon. See, the Bible says, if you read NIV and other versions, they said the burden will be lifted because of the fatness of your neck. 
that the anointing will increase you to a point spiritually peter tan one great man of god was caught up in the spirit some years ago and he saw the state of his spirit man the body was flourishing eating every kind of thing and when he saw his spirit the spirit his spirit man was as thin as a broom almost dying and god told him this is how you are spiritually we have many men of god flourishing physically but carrying no power that's the reason why people criticize miracles and criticize the manifestation of the spirit and everything they say said look just stay stay with the word i believe in the word of god there are many people that come for miracle service and hold their bibles in their hands and at the end of it you find them outside and demons are crying out of them it is the ministry of the word of god in conjunction with the operation of his spirit that will bring men into liberty that will bring men into truth are you not tired of the christianity you see around i'm asking you a question don't you ask questions that either god told us a lie in the bible or there is something we are not getting and let me tell you something i blame the leaders including myself the reason is because the degree to which we press in the spirit is the degree to which we give others opportunity to come in when we become complacent with where we are and a few falling down here and there there is a higher realm beyond just falling up and down where a man becomes full of the life and the power and the glory of the spirit listen the bible says stephen just lifted his eyes and there the heavens was open to him can you imagine such a realm hallelujah a man met me for counseling and he shared a story that broke me this is what he said he said he went to a particular ministry having a challenge him and his wife and after they after they prayed you know prayed did everything for him he was desperate listen he was really desperate and his wife was dying and when it looked like nothing was working guess what he did you will guess right he went to a you know all kinds of things and and did all kinds of conjunction and now when when people hear this we do like this don't do that until you can prefer solution let me tell you something we have no right to criticize any fake person until we can do the real thing are you listening to me is um, do you know how many people how many of your parents how many of your brothers how many of your loved ones that run to native doctors every day they come to church on sunday you know what i'm saying and you know i'm not telling a lie let me tell you we live in a world that has a real need are you listening to me a real need a real need and it takes the anointing of the spirit jesus walked upon the earth and the moment he stepped into the scene he was a breath of fresh air because the the scribes and the pharisees could not help lord i pray that we will not be scribes and pharisees in our generation that our christianity will be an authentic christianity that will be able to meet the needs of people and do the works of jesus christ we must be dissatisfied with a few miracles here and there if there are 150 people who are sick and three people get healed we should be ashamed and go back and cry not rejoice and carry titles and say man of god apostle joshua selman am i challenging you because when you challenge yourself and you begin to press into the spirit then you open up yourself for more of his presence when i began to study about god's generals let me tell you something i tell you sincerely the generals that lived i mean before most of these people they did not have the opportunity for their life to be recorded those guys walk like spirits on the earth you need to study about them and you'll be ashamed of the things we are doing number one they had no worship team that steers the atmosphere Right now, we live in a realm where you must steer the atmosphere as if the Holy Spirit has become a generator. So you say, okay, let's whine. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now the power is moving. 
those guys moved in a realm of grace a realm of power their miracles were real miracles are you listening to me i heard of a particular man who they came and someone's i mean there was a there was a wound this big the whole family had done everything and he held it and closed it jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever what is your degree of hunger handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of paul do you know something i told myself one day if i have the opportunity to preach in a pastor's conference i will do something i will carry one person on wheelchair one blind person one amputee and i'll tell them follow me for the ministration i will line three of them here and say anybody that cannot heal these three sit quietly and let's press now we can laugh and feel nice but the native doctors are corrupting people they are corrupting our families all kinds of things are happening there are people who are dying satan's kingdom it is advancing i i, I was watching a, a program again this evening and someone was saying how that he was in the occultic day, and he said he single-handedly won more than one million souls single-handedly i said god with our media we rejoice and say blue roof is full and we should be ashamed of ourselves are you listening to me hmm. bible says woe to them who are at ease in zion when there is a dissatisfaction in you you are ready to press further tonight i brought you to tell you that the realm that we are in the spirit there is a higher realm there are many of you who are sick here. you have been sick for long your families are sick is that true you have prayed for them nothing happened what are you doing about it anything pinching you from inside or are you just complacent for our fathers of old pressed into god jacob held him and said i will not let you go i will not let you go i will not let you go that a time will come your guitar steve strings will be more than what it is today that as you stand before the nations and strike one chord one chord it will reverberate the hearts of men we live in a generation with many christians and nobody can tell us a very concise plan of god concerning boko haram we have men we have men of god all kinds of men prophets apostles we should be ashamed of all these our titles When Naaman sent, Naaman was sent with a letter to the king of Israel. And he went and he gave him. The king was afraid. Elisha said, why are you afraid? Call that man to come and let him know there is a prophet in Israel. I don't know how many of us can make that kind of statement. Yes, we have celebrated HIV, tuberculosis cancers we have seen the grace of god but it's nothing compared to what god wants can i tell you something listen if this is my ministry inside this room i tell you if i can solve your problem the whole world will come and join the queue are you listening to me even if they will reach just they will be patient do you know how little the solution of mankind is many people are not pressing into god it takes sacrifice friends to get to that realm it takes sacrifice that's why many people are not pressing that's why the few that press when they get there they are the only ones and pride kills them because the sacrifice is too great when they get there there is nobody in their class are you following me now One of the greatest men that I respect, Prophet Kobus, who has stepped into a level of the miraculous that I'm satisfied with. In one service, 
they brought out about 200 people on wheelchairs and crutches now that's that's the work of the kingdom the day everybody enters here and we prophesy to you and we say in the name of jesus receive a miracle in your family and instantly you receive a phone call from your father even you will know that something different has happened I assure you, next week, Koinonia, by four, you will be here. All your loved ones will live wherever they are. Do you know the rat race of man is to look for solution? I assure you, if they find the real solution, they will come. How many barren people move among us all the time? We pray and feel like men of God. Ah, tonight I'm here to challenge you. In your room. In your room. You can preach 100 sermons. If you raise one person from wheelchair here, you will do publicity without a poster. And men come, even if you come and complain, they will just say, let's this. Embedded in the heart of every man is the need for every real solution. And let me tell you the truth. The fact that many people are skeptical about us means that there is, we are not yet providing that degree of the God life. Because people will look. Jesus was an awesome wonder. Let me ask you a question. Please, let me ask you a question. Please come, Aaron. Sweetheart, please come. You're a student here? Yeah? You're in demonstration. All right, listen to me. If Jesus were to appear to you right now, let's assume I'm Jesus. And he says, what do you want me to do for you? What will you say? You will run and carry your list. That means, the, that means you have problems. You are just laughing. The truth is you are not confident of the solution that is being... That's why you are quietly hiding it and say, let's manage what is there. If, if Jesus Christ, if we are truly his representatives, are you listening to me? How many of you can step in to a meeting and be sure that you will be healed? Be sure that you will be changed. That when they say, in the name of Jesus, you are blessed, you are sure that that word will come to pass. Are you listening to me? That this lady is here. If I am Jesus Christ, what, what, what class are you? JS3, you are going to write JSE. You are finished. Now, if I am Jesus Christ and I come to you and I say, sweetheart, your JSE is A. Will you doubt me? Why? Because I am Jesus Christ. Is that not true? Now we say as he is in heaven. Listen, listen listen we say as he is in heaven so are we in this life but how come if i tell you be blessed the truth is you are not seeing all of the blessings in your life you are just afraid to tell me the truth are you listening to me we gather people and claim to get them filled with the holy spirit struggle over them struggle over them turn their head up and down and then carry our frustration and go away and the people are irritated they know there is no power there hallelujah it's amazing that in the midst of this lapse we have men of god who make such boasts they say the man of do you know i get very ashamed Every time they say, now let's introduce the man of God, Apostle. And before they start, people are shouting. I'm saying, okay, Apostle Josh, Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, Apostle this. Do we match? So when people are saying, Kai, look at the demonstration of the power. Look at this. Uh -uh. I'm telling myself, I will not let anybody lie to me. I know the standard. The world is in a big need. We are celebrating ourselves like this because we have not been exposed. Go to the village and see the preparation that demons are doing. You will know we are joking. You know all this falling down doesn't impress them. It's just us that are hyping here. You go to the village and see a man divide a pot into two and pour water and you are seeing the other side and the water is boiling. Come on now. Even you, when you see that kind of thing, you will look at that man. I'm stirring up a real Christianity of power. And the truth is, when he finishes, when your father cannot afford your school fees, after going to the man of God and praying and sowing seed, prophet's offering, apostle's offering, every kind of offering, it doesn't work. I assure you, your father is going to the village. Except the problem is not too much. 
How many sick people leave Shika? Straight, they pass our churches and go to the villages. Some of your parents, have they not done it? We all came to Shika and prayed for them. Gathered around like men of God that made our boast and our noise and nothing happened. And while they just look, they say, thank you, man of God. In their heart, they already know there's no hope. And somebody calls them and says, sorry, um, we, we, there, is, there is one Baba. And now you can sit down and easily say, how can a man go to a Baba? You are not yet desperate for solution. A woman who has been around 10 years, 12 years, no children. Any suggestion will make sense at that point. Are you listening to me? You are here struggling and we cannot even prophesy and say you will graduate in spite of your courses. I tell you, go to a native doctor in Zaria and see if you will not do something that will change your result and you will graduate. Are you listening to me? A lady who is shouting and saying no marriage, no marriage and we are here saying okay, let's manage the situation. What is the psychological implication? When you were 12, what happened? Look at that nonsense. And you get to a native doctor as soon as you are entering he tells you born on the um, 16th of august your name is grace come and sit down there's a seat i've prepared for you here and this pot is boiling i know you like steven so what else tell me and say, baba is true and you see some of our parents as dignified as they are see how they become children in the presence of devils because they are desperate for solution they can come and sit here in church and we'll give them nice seats but the native doctor say, enter with your back. And they're entering. Because they are desperate. So, yes, and, and the man stands. He said, now sit down. He said, if you turn back and you see your father and your mother, your dignified people. There is a man of God standing and we fold our arms and say, you know, uh, the Lord appeared to me. Don't lie to us. Don't tell us lies again. Because we need to be seeing the fruit of that appearance. Stop telling us lies. That you saw Jesus and you saw angels because those who saw Jesus and saw angels in the Bible we know what happened to them let me tell you the presence of one angel killed 150,000 people those who chorus and seeing angels every minute every second come on am I challenging you tonight I'm shaking off things that the Bible says that David played his heart and something happened to Saul. A spirit left Saul. How many demons and principalities and powers lead the praises and worship in our church? Unaffected by the power of worship. Thank God for the excellence. Thank God for the backdrops. Thank God for everything. Am I challenging you? What is your concept of Christianity? It says, out of him will flow rivers. Rivers. What you see today that you call a blessing and the power of God, do you know it's just one step out of the cave compared to where God wants to take us to? We insult people and said they have gone to do all kinds of diabolical things. So why don't you help them? Satan does not create anything. He only perverts. Can we have a voice that will give us authentic biblical Christianity? Do we have men like that? That you can come to me with no job and you are already smiling when you see me because you are sure that you are going back with a job. Receive, receive, receive. And we are sweating and the protocol runs with a handkerchief. So you are joking. Nonsense. I'm not ashamed to say it. We should be ashamed of ourselves. I'm getting frustrated with all of these things we do and we sugarcoat our Christianity. You know what? God is angry, let me tell you. God is not happy about it. Oh God, give me members. Let Koinonia come and fool and we stand and we look at the many people. But there are people with needs. Real needs. And it's amazing there are many ministers who are complacent who just sit down on Sunday 
share one but i don't care whether you are quoting scriptures from genesis to revelation if it's not helping people to become like christ and really meeting their needs and breaking if your gospel is true satan should react to it i don't mean reaction satan should oppress you the people should be free it says and ye shall know the truth how come we teach we have sessions and sessions of weeks of teaching and i tell you demons attend all the sessions and only certain lower demons just manifest and we stand as men of god we are nodding but you know the real people who have demons you can't go and meet them because you know the demons won't go out you know the real people there are people troubling our fathers and our mothers we know that if we had if i gave you power right now that everyone every demon you shouted on will go some of you will enter bus this night and say uncle sam is leaving my house once and for all why are you unable to go hallelujah a minister finishes ministering and when he finishes he says pray for me i'm expecting a comeback from satan what the heck are we saying jesus casted out a legions of demons and slept sound the only reason why they caught him was because he gave himself they took him to a cliff and he just walked through there and he said as the father has sent me so send I you as the father has sent me so send I you that you can stand and look at your sisters and say the error of barrenness the error of waiting dying at 24 dying at 25 is over this is not the issue of man of God you are coming with an anointing full of the Holy Ghost This is what I cried and I told God. I said, Lord, if you are not going to take me to this level of Christianity, let me stop ministry. I'm fooling myself. Thank God for all the things that have happened. Thank God for the supernatural supplies and the grace of God. But there is more. There is more. We admire men who have stepped into that dimension or a bit of it. And then we pray all the time and say, the Lord is going to send a revival how will it come is it not going to come through us listen there is a price but i want you to know that god wants us to pay that price to enter into that level are you listening to me because satan is not sleeping about your case satan is nervous about your manifestation and he's not going to rest and if all we'll get up and do is just ba 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 thank you holy ghost holy ghost Holy Ghost! And demons are watching and say, I wonder how demons look at us. They say, what in the world is going on here? Power! And we shout. Jesus looked at a raging storm. He lifted his hands and said, Shalom, be still. Talk about authority. What manner of man? We struggle for hours with demons. He looked at the money. The demons were begging him. I've never seen a service where we come to and all the demons come to the front and say, please, ministers, before time for sermon, we know we are going out. Can you send us to Shika instead of Giwa? That's what they did for Jesus. The demons made advances and said, let's negotiate. We are sure we are going to leave. Nothing will make us stay, but please, just send us to the peaks. And Jesus said, go, go, go. Right now, what we glory in, what we glory in is to call a lady out. And then once she's shaking, you just want to prove. Look, let me tell you, we are doing things to cover for our laziness and lack of hunger. You just find one yielded lady who is moving. And like, now, I'll just touch you with one finger. What the heck is that? There are real sick people. If you are really a miracle worker, do it. Thank God for the growing of small, small legs. But what of the one who doesn't have anything? Can they come for miracle services too? Are they invited? Are they invited? 
Or are there some? Do you know? Listen, listen. Do you know what it means when blind people, lame people, crippled people sit down and come to our services and we're shouting, What manner of man is Jesus? Then when we get to the place, we made, and immediately they say, He made the blind to walk. You see, entourage, and the man of God is stepping in. Now, the man of faith and power. He comes to sit down, waste people's time, makes all kinds of noise, throws a few people on the ground, one migraine here, one cancer, one wheelchair, and the ass is going out. We all boast and clap. Shame on us. You should get up and come. There is a higher realm. Three men shook cities. How many men of God do we have in Zaria and in Nigeria? And yet evil is just thriving as if there are no men of God. When Paul entered a city, demons responded from the headquarters and ran and the three two men paul alone covered asia minor no flight no nothing full of the holy ghost charles g finney these were men that stepped a bit into that realm listen to what charles g finney would do this is what he would do round the city he's walking around while he finishes praying guess what he will do he will just walk out of the city suddenly men will start falling down from everywhere people are just preparing in their factory the power of God hits the people if we have that kind of thing happening in our generation the man will build it Joshua Selman and will say now come and sow sow, sow, sow everything sow let me tell you something the day God will judge the people who are sowing all the time, we, are, we, we just let them package your seed and sow into this anointing. What anointing? It's because the people are so desperate. So the little that is there, they pour themselves to it. But there is a God that sits in heaven and he desires for us to step in to a higher realm. We're going to pray and God will visit you tonight. But I don't know what is your definition of Christianity. There is a dying world out there. Enough of charity. We need miracle workers. Are you listening to me? We need miracle workers. A viper beats the hand of Paul. And Paul just looked at it and shook it. Shook it. Shook. Lord, take us to these realms. Where did you take Alexander Dewey to? Lord, where did you take William Branham to? Take us to that realm. Take us to that realm. Take us to that realm. Where you will move in a level of glory and grace. A level of power and victory. Otherwise, there is serious mourning that will come to the body. Because Satan will eat up everything he can eat up. Do you know something? The more you are being challenged and the more we men of God keep lying to you and not causing you to press and we ourselves will not press. Let me tell you the danger. The danger is that Satan will have a free ride and a day will come, frustration will come upon the body of Christ. I don't want to be one of the celebrity men of God who is wasting people's time and wasting God's time. I want to be a serious person. I told God that anywhere they invite me for a meeting, I'm going there for serious business. I assure you, if we step into this realm of power, you will know that you are a blessing to the world now. Your English notwithstanding, all these rubbish things we put as excuses in ministry, Say your lingua franca. Right now we live in a digital age. Let me tell you. If koinonia has just maths, if you are getting the kind of result that will scare you, you how did we used to meet before? Remember? We're meeting where? On the floor. And we have many men of God. You put balloon. You put this. The, the, P, the PA has his own cap. This guy has his own cap. Whether we wear bandana, whether we wear cap, whether we wear green, white, green, whether we wear football jerseys, nothing will replace the absence of fire. Nothing. See, the reason why ministries compete, they are only covering for lack of fire, I assure you. No man who has real fire has time for competition.
Hallelujah. I want to be that kind of person. I know people who accept God helps them. Their situation is hopeless. I went to Shika one time. I prayed for a lady. I tell you, I, I felt how powerless my prayer was. I hope I'm helping you tonight. I'm the apostle Josh who called. But I'm telling you this. There is a higher realm. And we can either pretend it and continue doing ministry or repent from ministry and step into a life of glory. That's what I want you to encounter. I've repented for ministry since. I've repented from it. There is a higher realm. There are many of you that cry in your hostels and you come and just sit down and say, Lord, would you touch me? And we are here laughing. Tell your neighbor, uh -huh, uh -huh. how does that bring healing? Please sit down. Sweetie. Satan will keep being attractive until the day the sons of life come out. If I spit on you and your family receives a breakthrough, I assure you, you carry container and come and say, Josh, where is that anointed saliva? As, as, as smelly as it is, you will say, no matter how fine you are, this is how desperate people are for a miracle. Let it rain, let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, Father let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain The rain of new levels Let it rain Open Open The floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let the church arise Let the pride you died for Every one of you listen to me. Do not think this teaching tonight is for men of God. I assure you, you will deceive yourself. The teaching tonight is not for men of God. The teaching tonight is for a generation that is desperate enough. That we are saying we are tired of this. Worshippers, are you ready to enter the next level of grace? Full of the Holy Ghost. Out of your belly. Out of your words. Out of this mic. Let it flow. Rivers. Rivers of healing, rivers of blessings, rivers of power, rivers of grace. Let the sick be truly healed. Let the oppressed be truly delivered. Set a new standard. Rise beyond nominal Christianity. Rise beyond average. Yes, you are a man of God, but there is more. Yes, you are a woman of God, but there is more. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Let's travel. For a few minutes, let it rain. Open the Lord, there is more. I am tired of this level. Tired of this level. There is more. I can be a better blessing. I can be a better blessing. Reka tempo go so freaking 
Siempre queremos generation of power, a generation of miracles, signs, wonders, living career of the glory, yield that to the spirit, yield that to the spirit, yield that to the spirit, that will confront the gates of hell, confront the gates of hell, the church, he said I will build my church, and the gates of hell, is not that need to bow there are situations that need to bow there are levels we need to step into hallelujah I'm going to pray for you I pray the prayer and I pray that tonight there will be a baptism of fire more of the Holy Ghost you need him this is not just the issue of falling down there is urgency. We need more of his power. More of the Holy Ghost. And I tell you, listen. The power of God will sweep across this place. I'm angry in my spirit. You must be ignited. You must be ignited. You must be ignited. I prayed and I told my father, invade the people with your glory. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to scatter yourselves around as much as you can. We are going to pray and there will be an impartation. No, you will not go back the same. You will not go back the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, listen. What will happen tonight is a baptism of fire. The Bible says the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And fire. He said his word was like fire in my bones. Fire for miracles. Real miracles. Real deliverances. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. Holy Ghost begin to move across the congregation right now in the name of Jesus right now I invoke power I invoke power I invoke an anointing I invoke power 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 move across the town move across the town move across the town 